Eiffel. London, 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 London. Eiffel. London. When you get cut, so everyone stay calm and I can't thank the gaffer enough. Gary, the lads, my team, my dad, Fran, Dave was good in the corner and Mick Williamson was just. I think that Gary's heard me first tonight, to be honest. That's a bit. <laughs> I thought that was on camera time. <laughs> Guys, any questions? How many, how many stitches is it? Have you had them in yet? No, nothing's going on. It's just it's the same. hospital, mate, so just got to go there first to sort, of, sort this. You never had anything, anything like that at all? Mm -hmm. I've had, uh, as I say, I got a neck against Mackenzie when he butted me. Uh, and, but that was only butterfly stitches it needed. I've had nothing like this. To be honest, listen, I study boxing, studied the game my whole life. I've seen what fighters do when they get cut, so I was trying to draw back on my own memory of what these fights, the great fighters do. I've seen, I've seen Ricky get cut. I've seen, you know, tons of good, good fighters get cut, and I just tried to think, stay calm, ignore the pain, and just go through it. You know, it's painful, but it's boxing. You know, this is, I'm in this business, and I'm, I'll never back down. Listen, I'll never quit. Doesn't matter. You hold me whole face up. I'll just keep coming. And to be honest, I still pressed the fight when I got cut. That's what shocked me. I pushed him back with the jab. I think the kid was feeling it off every single punch. I was making mistakes. I was my feet were falling short at times. But like I say, it, there's, it was just it was an awful lot of going on in my mind because I was just thinking this referee cannot stop this fight. That's all I kept thinking. I, I thought, and all the way through, I thought, don't let him connect with the punch. Do not let him connect. So I was trying to slip, move, and you know when the cut come, I think I must have he must have connected what twenty punches for the next nine rounds so I'm happy with that you know two punches around with me, me head moved and I've got the rounds in it's another lesson and, and the crazy thing is I, I'm learning fighting the WBC number five I'm learning as I'm going along I would learn to the Edison around the fight I've learned something else in this fight so you know I'm happy thanks to Eddie he, he believed in me he put me on and I've got that belt now to show to take home to the little one so I'm happy what's next time you know yet uh, well, this this kind of makes me like an interim champion at WBC, so I'm on the tail now, Dawson. I've got no problem going in with Dawson. I really haven't. I've got no problem facing him. He, listen, I'll be honest, I think he's the best light heavyweight in the world. Uh, I know that he had the setback against Ward, but I don't believe he's a 168 fighter. I believe he's a he's a top 175 fighter, and he proved that the way he dominates Hopkins. So, you know, he, he is a good fighter, but I believe in myself, I believe in my team, and I believe that the way I prepare, I could do it. So, you know, I'll just let this get better now. I'll go back to the gym and I'll work on the mistakes that I made tonight. And uh, I'll just keep trying to progress. Like I said, I just don't see the point in fighting number 50 in the world. I don't see the point in fighting number 75. OK, you fight number 75, then you fight number 50. People are going in the right direction, but they're just do it, doing it in 100 steps. You know what I'm saying? I'm fighting from Miranda. I took another step up, number five in the WBC. I'm happy to fight number one next. Number one in the WBC is Hopkins. I'm happy to do it. I'm happy to get in with anyone. I just want to find out how good they are. I've, I've coasted from round three there tonight. That kid just couldn't deal with the jab, the body shots. And you think, if I seen a cut open up on someone's face like he'd opened up on mine, I'll tell you something that I wouldn't stop. And the, But he couldn't keep coming because I'm giving him different things to think about all the time, from the feints to the leg movements, the head movements. And then he's feeling every single shot that I'm hitting him with. So. Like I say, there's positives, but there's negatives in the performance as well. Like I said, my feet fell short at times. At times, I didn't do certain things. And, you know, I've got to work on them things. I really have, but it was just, like I say, it's a learning process, massive learning process with the cut. I've never experienced anything like that. Tony, the, uh, the cut happened in, just after the second knockdown. Yeah. That wasn't that I mean, I was going, you seem to be steaming in for the uh, I was going for the kill, to be honest. And, and you left yourself a bit open. Yeah, um, yeah. We, we, I was looking. We knew I'd studied them. And his dangerous punch was the left hook. So I came inside of the left hook so he couldn't throw it. So the guy only goes and throws this daft, like right hand heavy slap. And as it come, I just felt my eye burst. It was, I've, I just can't explain it. We prepared to keep tight with the right hand. And as I've stepped in, I was I wanted to trade left hooks with him because I knew my right hand was tight. And as I've jolted for the, the exchange, boom, it just, it just burst. And I knew when they come back the corner, People were shouting their butt up, but I knew deep down, mate, it wasn't. It was a punch, and mm. you just got to be honest, mate. And I just said, "Give a shake me head." The referee just said, "I know it was." So get on with it, man up. You know what I mean? It's the hair business. You just got to do it.
with um, I mean, he went in his shell very much, didn't he? After, after it, was, yeah. it was quite odd, certainly after the fifth. When did he actually stop bleeding? Because it looked very bad for two rounds. And then Do you know what, mate? I don't. I, there was no blood ever went in the eye. I, I don't remember. So you going down your nose? Yeah, yeah I've read. I've, I've, I've watched, as I said, I've watched great fighters get cut in the past. And I've seen how they react and I've seen them talk about it. So I've studied these kind of things to see if I ever end up in that position, what they've done. And I've read and I've studied them things. And I was waiting for the uh, the blurred vision to come. And then I was waiting, you know, to start seeing red. And it just weren't coming. And, and I've got to put that down to Mick Williamson. I really have because he stemmed the flow of blood. You know, the only time I felt it was coming down my nose, off my nose onto my shorts. But like I said, it was painful. But you just got to get on with it. Man up. Man up. Because... If I do that to someone, let me tell you, I won't back off. I'll go for the kill. And, and, but I understand why Balanti wouldn't go for the kill because he was feeling every shot, mate. He really was. From the jabs, his nose must be real sore and he's going to have headaches for a while. And I think he's going to be passing blood as well, to be honest. So he's, he's felt them shots and knew he was, but he hit him to the body as well. It just took everything out of him. Slow him down, just so they couldn't get the finish, really. Tony, did the... Did the um referee at the end of the sixth come and say that he was going to get the doctor and it's gotten worse. He, he said, yeah, he, that worried me because all I asked him for, and I always ask every referee, listen, I've got a family at home, I've got kids, give me every opportunity that, that I can possibly have. That's all I want. I just want it, I just want it to be fair. And I asked him and I said to him, stick to your word with what you've said. And, and to be fair to Victor Lockham, he stuck to his word. He gave me every opportunity, but at the same time, the blood weren't going in my eye <coughs> uh, and he could see I wasn't getting caught. If you were getting caught with heavy shots on that cut then I believe he'd have had to have stopped it yet but I'd use me now and use my brain and, and that experience that I've gained in these short space of 20 fights. Is it intriguing to you that as you say you know, when, once the cut was there and you're keeping your right hand much higher and using your jab a lot more, yeah. you won the fight a lot easier in, in, for, the, for the next few rounds? Oh listen definitely, if I did, uh, to be honest I'll be talking about, I loaded up for the first two rounds and I was looking to take his head clean off and, <laughs> and I should have just listened to the gaffer. I just, I, did, I didn't underestimate him, I knew, I just knew if I landed clean on him I was going <coughs> to take his head off and the studying that I'd done previous, before the fight happened, he, he, he leaned back like this and I thought just get that second jab in then the right hand will just take him clean out and I was I was getting towards doing that in that third round and then when the cut come like I say it just changes things but no excuse I should have done a few more things that we practiced I had trained I'd had a great training camp I was really fit you know and I, I was trying but like I say you know things happen with the cut but no excuses I, I didn't do everything I was supposed to do tonight I just things change in fighting you know, and I'm happy that I was able to change my game plan as well I showed it that I, you know I went on the front foot I tried to be exciting I tried to get the knockout, and then when things came, I've showed the ability to change the game completely, just completely switch it around mid-fighting. You know what, not many fighters can really do that. A lot of fighters now fight one way, and they just they go with it, but I've showed two ways tonight. So. That's what I was suggesting, that you did box extremely well. Up yeah, just, just tough for me, as I say, it's just one of them things. <coughs> it's a nasty cut, but just man up and get on with it. It's amazing how downbeat you sound considering you won in such adversity. Yeah, but you know, you've got to take into consideration that there's no point in lying to myself and kidding myself and everyone patting me on the back and saying, listen, that was great, it was great. It wasn't great, it wasn't great and I can do so much better. But it's a win, it's a win. And it's a good win over a highly ranked opponent. Remember, he's, I'm number 14 with the WBC, he's number five. He, you know, he's unbeaten in six years, uh, you know. His credentials speak for themselves, but I always say it's different watching me on tape and it's different getting in the ring with me when you feel the shots that I'm hitting you with, jabs, the second people, and you know, I, I'd like to think I take a good shot myself now, so we knew he couldn't really hurt me, and just loads, there's, there's so many different things that are going on, but I'm just happy, I've come through it, it's another test, and another chapter in the book to be honest, I've come through it, I've just cut and just got to move on. Eddie, presumably, I mean, presumably he's going to be out of the ring for a no, but, uh, I listened, to, we're back out early in the new year. Yeah, we'll, but how, how far do you think he's away from uh, uh, Dawson? Who, I mean, obviously got people on board, so he's yeah. got an enormous amount of It's about time. applying pressure through mandatory positions for me. And it's exactly what we did with Kel Brook. Um, this belt historically gives you a top three ranking with the WBC. Belonte was number five. Um, we'll be back to Jose Suleiman and, and say that we want to we want to be nominated for a final eliminator. The top five, I think, is something like um, Hopkins, Goodnecht, Grachev, and Butte. 
Well, Butte and Greta. Butte's out. Um, Hopkins may fight cleverly. Gretchev uh, and um, uh, Goodneck's going to fight Shumanov. So I believe we're going to get nominated for a final eliminator and to become a mandatory for Chad Dawson. That's the plan. That's the long term aim. Um, we've got February the 23rd booked at the FA Arena. We'll have to see. Okay. You know. Okay. Uh, I know you're game. Yeah. Your plastic surgeon might not be so game. Yeah. That, I'll make him game. But, 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 but listen, I mean, the, the plan is is to get Tony Bellew out as regularly as possible. You know, he boxed ten weeks ago, or eleven weeks ago against Edison Miranda. So, you know, um, that's the key. And I want to get him out as soon as possible in the new year. You know, injury permitting. He's carrying a shoulder injury as well, which not a lot of people know about. So that also gives him a little bit of time to heal as well. But you know, it was a it was a game changer the cut because. All of a sudden, you're thinking he's going to knock him out in the next round or so, and then you're looking at everything's gone tits up, and cool, blimey, we lose to this fella, and where do we go from here? So, you know, he knows he could have performed better, but under the circumstances, when you've got a huge gash on your head and blood dripping down your face, and you know any second the ref just could come in and, and stop it all, I thought it was a great performance. Tony, are you enjoying uh, this new way of doing it this year, where you're trying to move yourself up the ranking? Move Oh listen, I'm so happy. Listen, I can't explain to you how happy I am. I've been left for six months at a time. I don't know when I'm fighting. You know, half of the fighters in my city, half of my mates, they don't even know when they're fighting. They can't be given a date. I've been given three dates in advance. I know when I can, I can fight as many times as I want and that's all I want to do. I just want to fight on a regular basis and earn a living. I don't want any handouts. I don't want to fight crabs. I just want to go in and fight good fighters on a regular basis. I fight anybody. I really do not care who it is. As long as it's on a regular basis, I'm given time to prepare. I'll really, I'll, do, I'll get in with anyone. I'm just so happy that, you know, there you go, February. You know, I, I, I want to be ready for February, I really do. And you I feel like having those long-term aims, it, it gives you more incentive in training time, makes you more up for the fights. Oh, so listen, you know that there's, what, again, the I doubt, like I say, got a family at home, you've only fight when you get paid. I fight 20 times a year if I could. The sooner I secured my future than their future, the better. Bye, guys. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.